<laughs> Everybody says, so which one is the best breed for me? It's not the breed, it's the level of energy. So you have to evaluate what energy you are as an individual. So some people are low, medium, high, very high. And in all this energy, is going to be a dog lover in it. So if you choose a, low, um, a high level energy and you're medium level energy, you automatically become a follower. So your energy is going to speak for you. So you have to make sure and be true to yourself, what energy are you? My clients will come and they're laid back people. I love my dog, but I don't know what's wrong. The dog's hold on you. This is holding the leash. Right? And the and the owner and the and the uh, human is just I don't know what's wrong with him. But see, everything they do is, 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 is based on the energy that they're being. It's best for us to allow them to come to us. Do not come to the dog. Let them come to you. Because that's going to allow them to do nose, eyes, and feel your energy. And if he wants something to do with you, he's going to rub himself against you. Or if he's going to nudge his head towards you. That means I'm ready to be touched by you. But a lot of people will reach to the dog when a dog is barely coming to them. And immediately it's a reaction from a dog. Or, see it? or they flight, or they fight, or they ignore you, but they won't submit to you. And those are the four options. Fight, flight, avoiding submission. Dogs will fight, dogs will run away, dogs will ignore you, or dogs will submit to you. See, submission is what we what I'm trying to uh, bring the awareness to achieve. So it's best for us to achieve calm submission, whatever dog we have, because that's going to allow him to meet the world. See, sir, oh. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, when you talk about fight, flight, avoidance, and submission, mm -hmm. what are the signs of those? But fight is a very simple, uh, it's very easy to, uh, to know when a dog is fighting. First of all, if you put a leash, they fight back. That's, that will be a manifestation of a fight. Right, see, I'm not doing anything, okay? She's the one who's doing it. Or a dog who wants to move forward and attack dog. He's in a fight mode. Or a dog who is not willingly uh, submitting to their owner and is showing teeth or is snapping back at the owner or moving forward. See, that is a fight mode. When a dog runs away from situation, which happens a lot of times in fearful dogs, insecure dogs, nervous dogs, or panicky dogs, they rather run away from situation than move forward. <coughs> Avoidance is when you're talking to a dog or you're having a communication with a dog, regardless body language, energy, or sound. The dog is paying no attention to you. He is avoiding you. Or a lot of times avoidance, you can also see it when, when you're coming to him and he just give you a circle. He's avoiding your presence, right? And submission is when they see human and they immediately go after the human. They see all human approach and dog relaxes. That's right. Or the dog goes in the back. That is a submissive mind. Yeah. Do completely um, submissive dogs need leadership roles too? Absolutely. Well, that makes it easier for the, for the person who owns that dog. You know, he's, he, automatically, he's not going to try to go into front position, right? But if they live with a more submissive person than them, they immediately become the dominant one. And this guy suffered more because they were not born to be dominant. You see, it? some are born to be submissive, some are born to be dominant. So the guys who were already born to be submissive, which is most of them, see, it's only one pack, one pack leader for pack. So, meaning there's going to be more followers than pack leaders. So that gives you access to not deal with a dominant state of mind. So, yes, a, a submissive dog requires leadership because that's how he's going to stay submissive. If you don't provide dominance, he becomes dominant. Here's why I think the walk is so important. If we study dogs in their natural habitat, this is how they earn food and water. This is how they learn about the world. This is how they experience the world, by walking. Walking in front of a dog allows you to be seen as pack leader. If we don't learn to master the walk, our dogs will never relate to us in a primal level. 
But see, the thing is, animals love to travel. As an animal, you know, exploring the world, especially dog, they love to do it with their feet. A fish would like to swim. A bird would like to fly. You see? So a lot of times, dogs that live with homeless get to travel in no LA more than a dog that lives in Bel Air. <laughs> see, the dog that lives in Bel Air has a big backyard, but it's just a big kennel. Everybody loves to walk with a dog, but they can't walk with a dog they can't control. So the walk becomes an unpleasant activity. Lola, whoa, whoa, Lola, come back. This is a typical example Lola. of a dog who's in total control of the walk. Lola, come back. Come back. Where you hear the owner calling the dog many times and the dog pays no attention to her. Come on, Lola, come. Lola, come on. And the walk gives them access to be balanced and connected and to explore the world. They don't want to go in a car. They don't want to take the plane. They'd rather walk than do anything else. So a simple walk is going to allow a dog to be in tune to you to the highest level of connection. This is why dogs that live with homeless people seem to be so in tune, right? And it's a cat passing by, the dog didn't even look at the cat. And it's a person with a flexi leash and the, and the dog didn't even care, right? Those dogs behave in a balanced way. Dogs that are on a leash, <laughs> this is the dogs on the leash, everybody. And there's a human in the back. He's so cute in the front. Hmm. Oh, not right now. <laughs> right? This is a lot of human. This is a human. If you notice, if you study, you know, what I'm talking about, you're going to see that the human is in the back and the dog is in the front. And the homeless is in the front and the dog is in the back. Position means a lot. Most of the time, the owners are following their dog. But because the dog doesn't get in trouble, they say, well, there's nothing wrong with the dog, right? But that puts other people in jeopardy, especially the person who doesn't have control over their dogs, because those dogs will approach you. And if you become tense, nervous from that, it's going to be a barking contest or an attack motion. They can never be in front of you while they experience this world. Okay, so this way you're always in control moving forward. So when, you, when they see a deer, when they see a rabbit, when they see other persons with a dog, you have absolutely control to control the reaction right away. So a simple walk gives you the access to control any kind of breed. Now, let's look at dogs as personality. Personality is something that we create. It only exists in the human world. All right, so now we're going to talk about personality, which is everybody's favorite subject. This is the name. This is Billy. This is Max. This is Tommy. This is Lita. You know, this is, this is what we create. Personality is something that we create. A lot of people say, well, my dog loved to explore, so they name him Columbus because he loved to explore. So they games, they create this personality for him, and they give him this name of Columbus, right? But the truth is, all dogs love to explore. This is the truth. They all love to explore. So it's a cultural belief that dogs are human. In America, we believe dogs are human. Is this is good for a dog or this is bad for a dog? Well, it's bad for a dog. It's good for the human. A lot of my clients will come and say, you know, my dog is my soulmate, and my dog is my son, right? But the dog wants to kill somebody, or the dog wants to, you know, the dog just pulls her all over the place. And through her personality, she can't convince the dog, or he can't convince the dog to listen to her or to him. So talking to the name doesn't give you access to control the behavior. What it gives you access to control the behavior is energy body language. I want to explain the difference between conditioned skill and personality. Conditioned skill is what we do with their energy. Example, we want a dog to play with the ball and then he becomes really good at it. Doesn't mean he's a great ball player. That means we just condition him to release his energy through the ball. And through the ball we can make him do other activities such as jumping over an obstacle or rolling over. This is not his personality. This is a conditioned skill. Personality is something that we create and it only exists in our world. 